One of the things that's always been really fascinating and compelling to me about The Undertaker is that there's a lot of mystery and mystique to him, not just so much the character, but more so the man. What really makes him tick? What is he all about? You know, this is a guy over the years that very closely guarded and protected his character, and even as he made some character changes and got out there and did more interviews, by and large, you didn't really know nearly as much about him as you did certainly other big names and other major stars within professional wrestling, and especially the WWF slash WWE. So, I know for me, even though it took me a little while to get there, I was really, really looking forward to checking out that five-part Undertaker Last Ride documentary series on the WWE Network. I absolutely was. As now you're telling me I've got a chance to find out a lot more about the man and his story and what drives him and what he's been going through from a physical standpoint, from a mental, psychological, emotional standpoint. Like, you could sign me up for that. And I'm really, really glad that this 30 days of take a very video series that I'm doing uh, spawned me to force me to watch that. And I'm kind of ashamed of myself that it took me so long to do so. Now, admittedly, as I was coming, getting ready to start watching it, I was worried that this was going to be kind of what I view as the typical kind of WWE puff piece and, you know, all of that. And it didn't necessarily, you know, feel like truly hard-hitting in every single way, shape, or form, but this shit got real in, in a lot of cases, and, and it was just fascinating to me, and I, I truly, truly enjoyed it, and, you know, if you're a wrestling fan and you have not checked it out yet, I certainly do recommend it, that's for sure. Like, one thing I was worried about when I was hearing about The Last Ride is, you know, what was the scope of the documentary going to be? And you see this a lot of time with Hollywood movies, especially when you talk about period pieces, historical fiction, or based on true stories, um, and you see biopics, sometimes the scope gets too large, where they'll try to cover somebody's entire life or their entire career, whereas you find that it's better served if you focus on a, a smaller block of time. And for what we got here, this is in all reality about a three-year block of time. Still a lot that can happen within that time, still a lot of story to tell, but breaking it out over five parts, like one impression that I got from this was that you weren't trying to rush through and you weren't missing a lot of the key pieces, like you were interweaving some elements of history, but you were talking about the reality at that time, you know, also a very introspective piece, looking ahead to the future as well and what could be heading down the pipe. I appreciate the whole concept here of the Last Ride documentary and the fact that it was really, really confined into a couple of years because it, it really got you to hone in on certain key specific elements. Like when you look at each of the five parts, like the part with Roman Reigns, like, and it's even when you go back and you think about WrestleMania, what was it, 33 in 2017? Like you could tell that Taker just wasn't right physically. And it's not surprising as you see the documentary and you start watching where he's talking about it and he's saying, yeah, I shouldn't have been in the ring. Well, believe me, sir, uh, we watched the match. We would all certainly agree with that, which is, you know, the reality was kind of heartbreaking too back then. Um, but at the time I was thinking like, hey, you know, this was the perfect send off for The Undertaker because while it's not the masterpiece you might have envisioned that you wanted, it was the necessary and right story to tell that, Father Time is undefeated. Father Time catches up with everybody. And it might not be the way you wanted to go out or envisioned going out, but there's a risk of staying in too long. And there was a lot to me that said, you know, that should have been Taker's last match at WrestleMania or in general was when Roman beat him. Uh, but obviously that didn't happen. Um... And I really like how they played out throughout the course of the entire documentary talking about you know, Undertaker and his love and his passion for the WWE, for professional wrestling, for the art form, for his character, you know, and how it's not such an easy decision. And talking about the outside influences saying that it's time, you know, Father Time is undefeated, it catches up to us all. You've done so much, why do you need to keep doing it? And at one point in time, Taker was talking about, 
it's not even for the fans. It's not for Vince. It's not for the company. It's about giving himself personal challenges and wanting to prove to himself that he could still continue to perform at a high level. And admittedly, over the past couple of years, we've seen some really good from Undertaker. Like, the Cena match at WrestleMania the next year was maybe not what we would have envisioned you would have expected to see out of a Taker-Cena match. But by God, it really worked. It really, really worked. And then, you know, you look at what happened with that Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36 and really love the background and the story of how that all came together and how they told that story. Uh, but then you talk about some of the clunkers, like Brothers of Destruction versus DX at one of those uh, Saudi Arabia shows and the match against Bull Goldberg where he almost got his neck broken. Like, it's the interesting dynamic of, you know, you have one match that's really bad against Roman, then you come back, and man, it really worked and it clicked. It was short, but God, it clicked and makes you think that you got more. And then you got a good match and a bad match and sprinkled in. You got that tag match and Extreme Rules where you look very good. And you got the Goldberg match where it absolutely was atrocious. Like, at what point in time do you stop chasing your tail here and say, okay, I got to be comfortable with all the crap that I've done over the years and everything else. Like, enough is enough. And I, I was really fascinated by how they told that story here. Obviously, you had so many, you know, notable big names that were interviewed and gave their thoughts and opinions as part of this documentary series. Um, you know, the one thing that really strikes you when you think about The Undertaker's career is just the sheer length of the career. I mean, you're talking about three decades. That is a long time. That is a lot of people that he's worked with over the years, a lot of rivalries to go through. And, you know, what's also fascinating to me is just when you look at it, it strikes you like, how many people he impacted, how many people he helped make their careers, how many people he helped establish, how many people he helped get to that next level. Like, Taker's one of those guys that, you know, commands so much respect, I think, certainly from everybody in WWE and everybody in professional wrestling, but people like me and you outside of professional wrestling because this is a top guy that didn't always get caught up in his own bullshit. This is a top guy that would put the business ahead of himself. He would do business and he would help others and understand that everybody's in this fight together. And when I make them, it means they make more money, which can mean that I make more money and other people can make more money. Like, how is that possibly a bad thing? And while there is certainly a piece to like when you're a top, top guy or top gal in wrestling, like you don't want to make yourself too vulnerable. And you want to have a clearly established, strong enough character to where you don't run into issues where your appeal diminishes. But at the same point in time, you got to help other folks out because it can't just be about you. Because that is not good for anyone, ultimately up to and including yourself. It will significantly diminish your earning power and earning potential. Um, and, you know, you just look at all the people that Taker's worked with over the years, you know, it's easy to understand why he has so much respect. Like, I really wish one thing they would have done in the documentary, like at one point in time when they were pressing Vince or asked Vince about, you know, what Taker's meant to him personally, and you could see Vince is getting emotional, um, and he didn't really address it that much. Like, I wish they would have dug in deeper there and went a little more there. You know, they alluded to the fact that all the people that left for WCW during the height of the Monday Night Wars, Taker was one of the loyal ones. He stayed put. He didn't go anywhere. He was the bedrock and pillar of the organization in many ways. He isn't, even as the white heart st hot stars of Austin and The Rock were burning so brightly, like he was the bedrock. He was the leader. He was the true alpha. And, you know, in terms of the relationship with him and Vince, you know, they did, I think, a relatively good job, as much as Vince was going to let them do it, of portraying some of that relationship. It's kind of interesting to see it behind the scenes, like the references to, if you remember going back to WrestleMania 30, like I thought that was a really interesting story about how Taker's still saying to this day he doesn't remember what happened in the WrestleMania 30 match. He watches, goes back and watches and uh, doesn't even really see where he was concussed. Well, believe me, Mark, uh, we were all concussed because, I, I, in my opinion, it's still one of the dumbest decisions ever to have ended the streak that way. That was just horrendous. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like the way it kind of pulled at the heartstrings and told the emotion and incorporated Michelle, his third wife, and the family and some of those other elements. Like, 
You know, the, the piece about right before the Boneyard match, how awkward it is. You get a call from your knees talking about your brother has died. <laughs> and then you're getting ready for a freaking Boneyard match like the next day. You know, and then talking about even with that Boneyard match, like how long they were there shooting and all that went into it. Like it was just fascinating stuff. Like, you know, there are certain things, sir, surely over the years, you know me for professional wrestling that I come in and have a much more critical eye on. And I probably could certainly have a critical eye if I chose to uh, with this documentary. But to me, when it comes to somebody like Taker, you know, these behind-the-scenes pieces are really interesting. It gives you a chance to understand the character, and more importantly, sometimes the person behind the character even more. Like, that adds layers of depth and elements of connectivity for that performer and the audience that is necessary. But when you talk about Taker... It's especially, again, they even referenced it a little bit, like Taker was talking about, you know, hey, I'm, in some ways, the way I kind of heard it was, I'm trying to make up for lost time, all those years that I really didn't do much in terms of public things, because I was trying to protect this character, and I was trying to be this character. I didn't make all these appearances. I didn't get all of this extra outside money and extra outside revenue and exposure and opportunities. And by the way, he's completely and totally correct. It's yet another thing that I truly respect about the performer, the character, and the man, is that he probably forfeited millions of dollars over the course of the past three decades because he was so committed to the character. Like, you just don't get that as much in wrestling anymore. And it just, this whole five-part series just really, you know, played on my wrestling fan emotions a lot. I enjoyed it tremendously. You know, sometimes when you're talking about, like, these biopics or these documentaries that are split up into episodes here, 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 here. You know, I, I sometimes like to break them up a little bit and watch and then sometimes re-watch a part before I move on to the next one. But then there are those that if you put it in front of me, I'm just going to want to watch it in one continuous stream and then probably go back and watch it again. And that's what happened with me. I watched it not once, but once I finished watching it, it took about an hour or so, and then I went back and watched it again. Like, this in some ways had some last dance documentary type of vibes to me. You know, as I talked about before, you know, when it comes to Taker, he's one of my all-time favorites, and he is beyond question the wrestler that I respect the most in the history of the business and in the history of my time, 30-plus years of being a wrestling fan. So I enjoyed this documentary tremendously. Is it perfect? Surely not. It certainly have some WWE spin to it, as you would expect, yes, but it wasn't grotesque, and it wasn't anything that was overly done, and it was, again, focusing on a small period of time, you know, from 2017 to really WrestleMania 36 and the immediate aftermath, like, so in that smaller frame of time, like, seeing the backstage interactions that he has with others, how people just naturally gravitate to him, you know, some of the fun things, like the story about Mark Henry talking about he takes the kids out for ice cream and they live in the same town. Like, that's the type of stuff you may or may not have known. But those are interesting factoids. You know, those are fascinating things to me to learn about individuals and people. Helps humanize them a little bit. And, you know, as Taker's got longer in the tooth in his career and... We don't know what happens next, whether he has one match left, no matches left, five matches left. God only knows with him. You know, it's nice to get more of that human element from him, that is for sure. So I certainly highly recommend um, you go and watch this Last Right documentary if you haven't already. If you're a big-time Taker fan and you haven't, then you're doing yourself a disservice. If you're just a WWE fan in general, you need to go watch this. And if you're just a wrestling fan in general, but not a WWE fan, you should still go watch this. Because I think everybody can find this to be an interesting, compelling watch for the about three hours or so that it is. Just like I hope that you all find this 30 Days of Undertaker video series to be an interesting and compelling watch. This is now day three. I'm three for three so far. I'm living up to my commitments, by God. I'll be back again on Wednesday, November 4th to upload the next video in the series. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and come back and check out all these videos celebrating the 30-year legacy of The Undertaker in WWE and doing it all month long in style.